All right, on this video, I'm going to attempt to answer a very difficult question. What about people who have never heard of Jesus? Bruce Every time I'm with you, yo, it's something else. It's a fact, it's a fact, and it's nothing else. Got your hand out, you don't even need a help. Oh, I don't need nothing else. Every time I'm with you, yo, it's something else. It's a fact, it's a fact, and it's nothing else. Got your hand out, you don't even need a help. Oh, that's right. I don't need nothing else. That's right. What's going on? It's Ruth Long with KingsDreamENT.com. This channel exists to encourage, empower, inspire you to live out God's dream. And we really do live in unprecedented times. Earlier this week, did a response video to a Vlad TV interview with Adam22. In that video, Vlad said, yeah, it gets really problematic when people believe you got to believe what they believe or you're wrong and they're superior and that if you don't believe in a Jesus that some people have never even heard of that you're going to help. And I stopped and I said, yeah, that, that can be problematic, but not all Christians believe that. I kind of left that as a cliffhanger intentionally. And that is where we started is Vlad basically assuming that all Christians believe that those people who have never heard of Jesus are going to help. I'm not a Bible scholar or, or an expert. I'm just gonna share what I see from scripture. I'm gonna do my best. I'm also gonna bring somebody who did go to Bible college, an artist named Not Clyde. I'm gonna bring him in to kind of get some of his perspective on this, get a little bit more technical. I'm gonna attempt to do that all in a reasonable amount of time. So just keep watching the video, give the video a like and thumbs up, all that kind of good stuff. But before we get into that, I gotta give you the recap from the illest songs this past Fan Love Friday. A 17-year-old artist out of Nashville named Bats. He's booming on TikTok. Check this out. We build different. I am not like you. We is not the same. We build with different scrolls. We build with different tools. And we got different crows. And we be making plays. And we don't ever lose. Trying to get some infrastructure so I can pass to my children. Guaranteed in a couple years gonna have me some millions. I been grinding every day. I swear to y'all where y'all killed this. Yeah, they mad and I'm winning. Yeah, they y'all when they feel this. I'm the Next submission is from an artist named Abel. Yeah, I know God got a sense in it. Yeah, I know God got a sense in it. Uh, I know God got a sense in it. Yeah, I know God got a sense in it. Uh, life get hard, I'ma stand with them. Uh, Vibes in my life, I'ma dance in them. Uh, Cause I know God got a sense in it. Yeah, I know God got a sense in it. Uh, God got a sense in it. Uh, look, I got my hands in the air. I'ma surrender. I wasn't offended, so grace came and brought me up out of despair. We got DJ Stand Out with a track with Jody Jermaine and Shy Juan. Check it out. You gonna have to come inside. I'm like, start it up. Can I tell you I got drive hands up? Give me five. You gonna have to come inside like. Yeah, I got the keys. 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 Yeah, give me a ten. We got the homie Tendre. No sir. Got so much emotion and COVID is causing it. Panic is poison, I'm dipping, I'm dodging. It's a quarter past eight, got a quarantine day, and the wife is looking fire. That's nice. Cooped in a room with a rib by steak and a bottle of sanitizer. Yes, yes. Had a tug of war match for a crystal geyser. Had to hit up the street TP supplier. Got hot pockets for apocalypse. Man, I swear these days seem ominous. My God. And if you want your music heard, link is in the description. Sign up for the Patreon community, $10 a month. So I think when we ask this question of what happens to people who have never heard of Jesus, we first have to ask where the question is coming from. It's usually coming from one of two places. It's coming from people that are being kind of combative towards the Christian faith because Jesus did say, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It's using this like gotcha statement. Well, what about people who have never heard of Jesus? Let me trick the Christian question. Well, where does God come from? Or it might be coming from a sincere place of believers who are in conflict and have a heart of mercy and are trying to figure out how to make sense of a tough topic and maybe some stuff that they've heard. The question of those who have never heard of God. There's a couple different ways that people view it. Some Christian fundamentalists, which I would disagree with, say that if you never confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, Jesus is Lord, you're out automatically. Don't believe in that. I'll explain why. The other option is that babies, unborn babies, children, 
there's this age of accountability at the age of 13, then that's when you know right from wrong and that's when you can make a decision for God. And I would say the third position, which is really pushing back and asking the question, well, who is ultimately in charge of salvation? Who is ultimately in charge of who gets into their house? And this is why I would align with my Calvinist friends that believe that God's a big God and God's ultimately the author of salvation. So let's get into some scripture, shall we? We can't separate the character from God and what we know of God to be true. In Psalm 103, David writes this, the Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. So there's an anger of God, but he won't harbor it forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our inequities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him, for he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. We have to acknowledge that that passage is written by King David, who made some pretty horrible mistakes. He committed adultery. He had a man killed. And mind you, this is before the cross. This is before the atonement and the work of the cross. Nevertheless, the scriptures say that he had a heart after God. This is 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promises, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. It says not wanting anyone to perish. The, the famous verse of all, right? John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Another pushback that I've heard from some believers is Romans chapter 1, verse 20. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power, and his divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. This is the verse that's oftentimes completely misquoted and butchered. People use this verse and say, see, people are without excuse. They're without excuse. They're going to hell, right? And they take, and they use this verse to take on a default position, even though they may have never heard of the gospel. This is what you will never find. You will never find Bible verse that says that God sends people to hell by default who have never heard of him. You won't find that in the scriptures. That is just not in there. So here's a clip of me and not Clyde going over this topic. And I think you'll find it beneficial. Some of you guys may know not Clyde's music. I'm a fan, super wavy, super fun, modern. Thank you. One thing people may not know about you is that you are a pastor and you have yes. your degree in pastoral leadership and biblical studies. And you brought up something interesting. General revelation, special yeah. revelation. General revelation is through natural means. <clears throat> this can be through creation, rationalizing and through reason. Step further is special revelation which is a revelation of Jesus, of his salvific work through the Holy Spirit and through scripture, pretty much. And the, the, the Proverbs 24 was in verse 30. Um, I went past the field of the sluggard, past the vineyard of someone who has no sense, and jumping to 32. I applied my heart to what I observed and learned a lesson from what I saw. Essentially that he's observing um, natural creation and it's, uh, it's allowing him to uh, have these revelations about God, who he is, who we are, stuff like that. Right. Okay, so that's general revelation. Special revelation is the hearing of the gospel, the reading yeah. of the gospel. So Holy Spirit reveals himself. Jesus specifically. Jesus specifically gives you a special revelation through people, through the word through the word of the Bible, a sermon, a prophecy, maybe even a dream or a vision. There's been tons of accounts of people who had never or, heard yeah, of or, Jesus having re revelatory dreams of Jesus, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's special yeah. revelations. If people haven't heard the gospel, essentially, if they haven't heard of who Jesus is, haven't gotten the chance to hear about who Jesus is, can they still be saved? Will their sins still be forgiven, taken care of, handled? Will that penalty still be absorbed into the salvific work of Jesus if they haven't heard Jesus and if they haven't professed that Jesus is Lord? And you made a good point of would a good God who is just provide means for even these people who haven't heard of the gospel and of Jesus to still be saved and sanctified. I think it all boils down to how you view what Jesus did on the cross. Penal substitution is the concept that Jesus took on the penalty of sin in our place, in our stead. Satisfaction is the theory that Jesus was the substitute that would take on 
and absorb the wrath of God. They sound the same, but the difference is penal substitution is how we can say that our army goes off to war and our army is off in another country fighting in our stead on our behalf. And so the work they're doing over there is blanketing our nation so that we can live freely, right? Whereas satisfaction is if there was a, a mugger or a, a thief standing in front of us, pointing a gun to us, and someone steps in front of us and takes the bullet for us. So those two concepts, um, they sound similar when you say them, but when you really you know, conceptualize them are very different. Yeah. Because one is that Jesus's work on the cross was necessary to blanket kind of all throughout history so that anyone that would catch it would become saved versus Jesus specifically died for each one. Yeah. What Jesus did, it just opened the doors of salvation through his work. I think you can say that he doesn't necessarily have to be recognized, but that through him, the doors for salvation were opened up. Mm faith in Jesus, in a Jesus they haven't necessarily heard of, mm -hmm. but that Jesus' work was what kind of opened that up. Mm -hmm. What comes to mind for me is, um, you know, Abraham, Moses, they died. They didn't necessarily know Jesus, but I think in Hebrews it says they've through their faith, their faith of Jesus. Right. They just didn't have the face or the name to match the faith. Like if somebody, one of your youth ask you, what happens to people who've never heard of Jesus? What is your short response? God can do whatever he wants. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> He's God. Yeah. I mean, he, of course, operates within uh, reason to him, but he's God. Essentially, he can do whatever he wants. I think sometimes we can limit God in how much he is relentlessly pursuing um, his people. If God sent his son, I think he would make a way for people to, to know who he was. Yeah, that's good. And I would agree. What I go back to is the question of who is responsible for salvation. If we actually look at Ephesians 2.8, one of the clearest verses where Paul is talking about what is salvation. Ephesians 2.8, for it is by grace you have been saved. What is grace? Grace is a gift. You've been saved by grace through faith, through belief. And this, this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, reiterating grace, gift, not by works so that no one can boast. Salvation is by grace, through faith, not by work so that no one can boast. So the way I answer this question is, first of all, I don't know. Second of all, I would say it is ultimately for God to decide. He gets to decide. He's a good God. He's a merciful God. He's a just God. He's a personal God. I think he is the, the very definition of good. He is the very definition of morality and it all springs from him. And therefore, because he's a good God, I don't worry about unborn babies. I don't worry about mentally incapacitated people, people who can't make decisions. God can save whoever he wants. God decides it is on God to do what God sees fit. And so I do not believe that everybody who hasn't heard of the name of Jesus is going to hell by default because I believe salvation is a work of God. I believe salvation is a work of the Holy Spirit. And what would, how would we account for everybody in the Old Testament? How would we account for David and the things that God revealed to him and God saying he had a heart after his own, even though David repeatedly fell short? How do we define the thief on the cross? He didn't commit any works. He didn't do anything. He just simply believed. And Jesus revealed himself and he believed. And Jesus said, surely this day you will spend eternity with me in heaven. I believe Jesus is the way to God, but I believe Jesus can show up in a dream, show up in a vision. I believe Jesus can pull up on somebody in their deathbed. I believe Jesus can save whoever he wants to save. And so scripture has to interpret scripture. Ultimately, God decides. Ultimately, God is good. Ultimately, God is for us. And ultimately, God, it's ultimately God's house. And ultimately, God is the author of salvation. And God decides who gets in, not me and not you. So my answer to this question is one, I don't know. Two, I would answer it according to Peter, 2 Peter 3. This is the way Christians should, should receive this question. This is the way we should process this question. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promises, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repent. That is the heart of God. God wants everybody to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. There is a judgment coming. 
okay? Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives. And then he, and then he commands us to live holy lives again. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. This should be an encouraging passage. This should reveal the heart of God, but at the same time, show the duality that there will be a judgment at some point in time. And I would also respond in a way that reflects the fruit of the spirit we find in Galatians 5. Gentleness, kindness, humility, patience, love, that we don't have all the answers and we as believers should be the most humble, we should be the most gentle, we should be the most kind in saying that we don't know and we don't decide. So that is my opinion, that is what I've gathered from scripture, the character of God. God is a loving, good, just father who wants to reconcile his creation onto himself and therefore, whatever God decides, he's going to be good. He's going to be just. So therefore, I don't worry about people who haven't heard the gospel. I don't worry about people who weren't born or whatever, because I think ultimately God is a good God and he will reconcile his people unto himself. And therefore, I could sleep peacefully at night while at the same time being inclined to live a holy life and to share the good news with others. What do you think? Leave it in the comment section below.